Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is looking at salts and pH. First of all, we're going to recap naming salts. This is something that you would have looked at in National 5. So here we have acid plus base to produce salt plus water. You have four examples to try here. Pause the video and give them a go. So the first example that we have is hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So the start of the salt's name comes from the base, so it will be sodium. The second half of the name comes from the acid and hydrochloric turns into chloride. So our salt will be sodium chloride. Looking at the second example, you have sulfuric acid and magnesium carbonate. So that will produce a magnesium salt and this time it will be a sulfate. This reaction would also produce carbon dioxide. Here we have ammonia and nitric acid. So ammonia becomes ammonium and nitric acid will become a nitrate salt. The final example is ammonia and ethanoic acid. So you'll get an ammonium salt again. And this time it's ethanoate as your negative ion. When we're looking at producing salts, in the past you've just thought of acid plus alkali to neutralise and produce a pH 7 solution. However, that does depend on what acids and alkalis that you have. Um, if you have a strong acid and a strong base, then your salt will have a pH of 7. However, if you have a strong acid and a weak base, you'll get a pH of less than 7. And a weak acid with a strong base will be a pH of more than 7. So you can think of this much like a tug of war where the pH is being pulled to the side which is stronger. For a weak acid and a weak base, the pH is very dependent on uh, what acid and base are being used. So we're not going to look at that here. To understand how the pH of salts can change, we need to understand the water equilibria. So within water, you have H2O and they are dissociating into H plus and OH minus. However, H plus is a single proton, so we tend to get H3O plus and OH minus. We do simplify this to just be H2O becoming H plus plus OH minus, just keep in mind that it is actually the H3O plus ion. This water equilibrium is happening all the time whenever you have a solution and your acids and bases are going to be in solutions when we're looking at them here. The first one we're going to look at is um, the reaction between a strong acid and a strong base. So we are going to look at sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Okay, and they form sodium chloride and water. As they are both strong, they completely dissociate into ions when they're in solution. And this also completely dissociates into ions. So you have NaCl becoming Na plus and Cl minus. At the same time, because everything is in solution, you have the water equilibrium. And if we look at the interaction between the ions produced by the salt and the water in equilibrium, that explains how we get a pH of 7. So the sodium ion could react with the OH- ion to produce sodium hydroxide. But because sodium hydroxide is a strong base, it completely dissociates. So that reaction won't happen. And the same can be said for the chloride ion. It could react with the H plus ion to produce HCl. However, because HCl is a strong acid, it would completely dissociate again. So no H plus and no H OH minus are being removed from the water equilibrium. So overall, the concentrations of H plus and OH minus remain constant and equal. Therefore, the pH will be 7. However, if you're looking at weak acids and strong bases, then we do get a change. And pH. So here we're going to have sodium hydroxide again, but this time we're going to use ethanoic acid. 
and that will produce sodium ethanoate and water. These are also in water, so we have the water equilibrium present as well. If we have a look at this salt here, we have sodium ethanoate. That will break up into Na plus and CH3CO2 minus ions. Like before, the sodium ion could react with the hydroxide ion to produce sodium hydroxide, but since that is a strong base, it would split up again into the ions, so we won't remove the OH minus. However, the CH3CO2 minus can react with the H plus, and as we know, because weak acids exist in equilibrium, this equilibrium here would be set up. So we have the ethanoic ion reacting with the hydrogen ion to produce the ethanoic acid. Now this equilibrium lies very much to the left. So the ethanoic ion will react with the H+. If we are having the ethanoic ion react with the H+, from the water equilibrium, the water equilibrium is then going to shift to the right to try and redress the balance there. By doing that, it's then going to have an imbalance of OH- ions and that will push the pH up, so your pH will be greater than 7. The final example we have is where we have a strong acid and a weak base. So in this case we're going to have ammonia as our base and hydrochloric acid as our acid, and that will produce ammonium chloride. At the same time we will have the equilibrium of water, And if we look at this salt and we split it up into its component parts, then we'll be able to see what is going on. So your NH4Cl salt is composed of a positive ammonium ion and a negative chloride ion. The chloride could react with the H plus to produce HCl, but as HCl is a strong acid, this would immediately dissociate into ions, so we won't have that reaction happening. However, if we look at the equilibrium which exists between ammonia and water, we'll see that we have the NH4 plus plus OH minus. So NH4 plus and OH minus can react to produce ammonia plus water. Now this equilibrium lies very much to the left, so when the NH4 plus produced by the ammonium chloride salt in this neutralisation meets the hydroxide ion, it will react to produce ammonia and water. That means that we have removed this OH-. The water equilibrium will now push to the right to redress that balance and will produce more H plus ions. Because we now have an imbalance of OH- and H plus ions, our pH will be less than 7. Here's an example for you to try here to explain the expected pH of the following salts using equilibria equations. So our first salt here is potassium butanoate, which is KC4H6O2. If we split that up into the two ions, we have K plus and C4H6O2 minus ion. At the same time we will have the H2O equilibrium reaction from an H plus and OH minus. Now your potassium could react with the OH minus to produce KOH. However this is a strong base and therefore would immediately dissociate into ions so this reaction won't happen. Your butanoic ion can react with the H plus to produce butanoic acid, which would be C4H7O2. This is an equilibrium reaction, and this will lie very much to the left or to the but uh, butanoic acid side. That means that we will be removing 
the H plus from this equilibrium. If you remove the H plus from the water equilibrium, the water will shift the equilibrium to the right to try and replace it, but we now have an imbalance of H plus and OH minus, which means that your pH will be greater than seven. In the second example here, we have ammonium nitrate. The ammonium nitrate salt is NH4, NO3. If we put this into water and it dissociates, we'll have NH4 plus, plus NO3 minus. At the same time, we have the water equilibrium reaction, H2O becoming H plus, plus OH minus. The nitrate ion could react with the H plus ion to produce nitric acid, but as this is a strong acid, this would fully dissociate into ions, so this reaction won't occur. However, the ammonium ion can react with the H plus in an equilibrium reaction to produce NH3 and H2O. This equilibrium lies very much towards this side here, which means that we will be removing the OH from the H2O equilibrium. The H2O equilibrium will then push towards the right to try and replace the OH minus, which has now been lost, but at the same time producing more H plus. We'll have an imbalance in the concentration of H plus and OH minus, which means that your pH will be less than seven. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please remember to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.